in this message we conclude our series on the growing church and the title of this particular message is called understanding the times and our scripture is 1 chronicles 12 verse 32 and it talks about the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do and I think that's important if we are to build churches in the society in the communities that we live that we understand the times in which we live and therefore we know what to do thinking of demographics because this is all helpful in terms of understanding this particular message thinking of demographics we think of something that refers to uh, selected population uh, characteristics used sometimes by government market research certainly but we're talking about uh, things such as age race income home ownership all those factors come together and we use the word demographics to talk about this particular uh, group of people but then there is generational or there are generational cohorts and this is something perhaps even more specific where we're talking about a group of people that are bound together by the sharing of common experiences a group of people that share a particular statistical or demographical characteristic and as we go through this message unfortunately I'm not going to have time to spend and to devote the uh, time per cohort as I did during the sermon that I preached in church on this but what I am going to do is just go through it uh, sort of briefly an overview and then at the end of this message on the screen will appear the points and by then you will get the uh, drift of where I'm going with this particular message but understanding generational cohorts in other words group of people that are bound together by age it will enable us to be effective in reaching out to that particular group of people of course as we look at those characteristics for the generational cohorts we will understand that not every single person fits into that particular mold that particular way of thinking there will always be anomalies but bearing in mind that the majority of people will take on board those characteristics or at least down the road of taking on board those characteristics it enables us to be effective in reaching out to a particular group of people and therefore defining where our individual churches are going we call it the generation gap but in effect what we're looking at as we go through this uh, message and we look at the cohorts is we're talking about different groups of people from a different uh, way of thinking a different ethos in many ways and that's what binds those people together and that's what sometimes and very often causes conflict with people from another generational cohort another way of thinking let me just pull out a few examples to highlight what I uh, mean the World War two cohort which as you will see on the screen later uh, people born between 1928 1945 uh, currently age 65 to 82 the, the characteristics that uh, define that particular cohort conformity think here in uh, the UK uh, between the wars this is a group of people born between the wars think of the estates that were built and without exception there was conformity people were happy to settle into what we would call and define by the word conformity however compare that with uh, perhaps uh, a later uh, cohort as we read some of those on the list uh, for example the baby boomer one cohort one of the characteristics that defines those people is individualism and so uh, right the way through to the uh, present cohorts 
um, we find that when people build estates now, for example, houses are very different. You find a semi uh, next to a detached, next to another group of semis, maybe next to an apartment block. And even within that, the houses will be different because people have this desire not to conform any longer, but rather to be uh, individual and to have something that stands out as being different. Ironically, in the desire to be individual, groups of people still cling together, whether it be fashion, music taste, or whatever. That's the irony of it. But within them is a desire not to conform like perhaps our parents or grandparents did, but rather to be individual. And, and all of this, as we throw all of this into the mix, what it does is it helps us to define what sort of church we should be. Because although we obviously have to be open to all people when we are building the church, the church that will be most effective is the church that will have a very clear path in which it's heading in terms of the target people that it's reaching. So the church that targets, for example, young families, or the church that perhaps targets uh, people approaching retirement age, and that's their main focus that they're working on, then they will be more successful because of that particular uh, group of people that they're focusing on and understanding the people, understanding the way that we think in a general uh, sense, of course, it enables us to be uh, more effective in reaching that particular uh, group of people. We, we conclude the uh, generational cohorts with the generation Y. Um, there are more after that, of course, but uh, the generation Y cohort one of the characteristics there, as you will read on the screen, is an acceptance of change. There is a great uh, openness within people 30 and under to accept change. Whereas when we go back in the cohorts to the uh, depression cohort, those people 89 to 98, in other words, the elderly, there is a definite we don't take risks. And so if you have a church, uh, say for argument's sake, that is made up of 50% of people under 30 and 50% of people in their 80s and their 90s, it will be very, very difficult to bring any sort of harmony because the elderly people like the safety of the fact we've always done it this way. Whereas the younger people like this element of pioneering, this element of moving on and moving forward. And so to uh, recap, uh, you need to look at the uh, cohorts that will appear on the screen later to give a, a good idea of where I'm coming from. But to recap, these cohorts are, are not set in stone. People will think differently and not everyone will conform to these uh, points that will appear on the screen. But generally speaking, this is what defines that particular group of people. Demographics is a wide uh, word that can refer to many things. When we come to generational cohorts, we're now speaking about groups of people based together on age. And by understanding how people generally think, it helps us as churches to reach people where they are. Like the men of Issachar, they understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. And if we can understand the people around us, that will enable us to be effective in reaching out with the gospel. The gospel doesn't change. It's 2,000 years old. It will never change. But the ways and the means in which we present it to each generation ought to change because if it doesn't, then we will get left behind. But as we tap into where people are and we reach them at their particular point, we will be effective.